I turned the bell inside out. So I'll show you how I turned. I turned the form inside out, and it came out like this. That's another new form. It's not many of the books. That's another new form. And so to figure that out, you know, how do you do that? How do you figure that out? I just reverse it, and I got two sounds. I have two of these forms exactly the same. Because I turned this one inside out. I'll show you. I'm going to put this back where it originally was. I put magnets in here so they kind of stick good, you know? <laughs> this form is pretty cool. I'll show you why. I'm going to make, of course, you know this is air, right? Everything that reverses is air. So I'm going to make this into an aerial sculpture. And an aerial sculpture is what they call in sculpture field aerial sculpture. Here it is. So can you, you can see that, that it's the same form? There. It is, really. <laughs> it's the same one. And how do I know that? It's because this is an example of the fourth dimension. And the fourth dimension is reversing. So you can see the inside and the outside at the same time. And that's what the fourth dimension does. You can see both yourself and the other. And you realize you're both the same. You both, there is the other is no really separate from you. That's a reversal. So here you will see for the first time, I think, both the inside and the outside. So remember, the inside, this form, okay, is in here. And the trouble is you can't see it until you move it into air. You see the bell? Oh, yeah. There's the bell right there that is coming in through spinning. This bell is inside there. Is the light good enough to see it? Yeah. Good. <laughs> so I turned this bell inside out. I learned how to do it. This is what the bell looks like inside out. It's a new bell. It's a new bell in that it sits on the ground. Or to oppose to this has to be suspended to ring. To ring. With this one you can ring from the ground. And the tone that comes out of here comes out the top, not out the bottom. This looks like an oriental bell, you know. But the bottom is solid. <coughs> Only this is open at the top, and inside, there's a cone. So I have no idea what the sound is going to be like. Hmm. But I do know that it's the opposite of an earth bell. An earth bell has this angle so that it reaches a certain diameter of the congregation. Everybody say, hey, you guys, come on. Huh. Well, this, this <laughs> do that. Something different about this one. Reversal. Air. Fire. Fire is a difficult one because fire is a process of in all of them. All of the earth, water, air have fire processes. But I felt that fire was the ego and the enthusiasm, uh, uh, um, the consuming. So the thing that I found that was closest to fire was an inversion. An inversion is hard to understand because you always get mixed up between an inversion and a reversal. And they're different. This is an inversion. That's inverting. It's turning inside itself and not moving backwards until it goes out. And if you look at any picture of a bomb or a Atomic bomb or a gas explosion, everything that looks like this, doesn't it, when it goes up? You notice that next time you see an explosion on the TV? <laughs> it's fire. I, am, I study this one guy. This guy is a great guy from uh, Switzerland. His name is Paul Schultz. And he developed an oil light. This is his book. 
This is 1960, uh, he patented. And now they use this shape for mixing explosives. You know, it doesn't explode, it's so soft. I guess they put it in a tube, use it as a propeller and a mixer. And where did it come from? It came from the cube. And what he did was he took the cube, he was instructed by Rudolf Steiner to invert a cube. And the guy says, okay, I'll try to do it. So what he came up with is he took one corner out of the cube. Nice form. That's really nice. Just so happens to have another. And when you do that, you can invert this. It goes from the center to the periphery. And back to the center. And then out to the periphery and back to the center and so forth. That's great. But this oloid is what's in here. You can't see. There's an oloid in there. And it looks like this. I made it out of paper, so maybe not too good looking, but it's a beautiful shape that this guy came out. That's inside here that you can't see. You can't see that. You can't see that in there. But it's there. And I found how it worked. So I want to do that to mine. <laughs> so, I did the same thing he did. I took the top off, I took the bottom off. That's what he did. And I inverted it. Here it is. This is an inversion of a seven sided form, asymmetrical, not regular. It has 12 edges. It has seven points, seven surfaces. Inside the middle of it is a six. And it has 12 edges, which is, these numbers are esoterically huge. OK, what's inside it? This is what's inside it. This is what's inside the inversion of a seven-sided form. <laughs> But it's a beautiful shape. It's in a parking lot if anybody wants to use it. Okay, also, I inverted a, a dodecahedron. This is a dodecahedron, which is 12 pentagrams. It's a pound sloppy of it. But it is a dodecahedron. Can you see it that it is? It is, huh? I inverted this, then watch it. turns this beautiful star, a six-pointed star with two edges on each side. That thing's beautiful, and I turn it back in, and there it is again. That's called an inversion. That's not a reversal. So this is fire, not water. No, not air. Okay. And sure that. Now, I'm still doing a reversal. And the reversal that I want to do is I want to tell you about. Rudolf Steiner says, pure thinking, or sense-free thinking, 